Hey guys, have you ever done a full safety inspection and fastener check on your motorcycle? It's midwinter here in Northeast PA, riding is out of the question, so I'm going to pull the bike out, put it up on the lift, and go over it from head to toe. This is something that every rider should do on their bike at least once a year. Let's get started. So we all know about bike maintenance. There's a schedule, usually by miles. Every certain number of miles, we check or change fluids, uh, other parts on the bike, and then we ride. But the safety inspection is different. Here in Pennsylvania, there's an annual safety inspection required by the state, but I've seen those inspections. They take about five minutes, they slap a sticker on it. I wouldn't want to put my life in the hands of that alone. So a comprehensive safety inspection of my bike is something that I do once a year. I mean, what part on your bike would you be comfortable having come loose and fly off when you're riding along at highway speed? So what I'm gonna to do today is just show you how I do it, what things I check. I'm sure there's probably a few things I'll miss. And if you wanna add that to the comments, I'll take all those and put them in the description for this video. So I have a checklist that I use, and I seem to add to it every time I do this. I'll post that in the description as well. First thing I'm going to look at is the exhaust. I always seem to start here because exhaust rattle is a pretty common thing. Now this is an aftermarket Vance & Hines, big shots, but you'll get the idea. Um, this exhaust has the heat shield, which is nice and chrome, and then behind it is the actual pipe. And the heat shield is attached with hose clamps, worm gears. And what I'm going to do is just go along each one and just give it a very small twist with the screwdriver and just make sure it isn't loose. Basically what we're doing here is anything that can be easily turned is loose and needs attention. So obviously it's got to be tightened. Then I'm also want to keep an eye on it. Maybe check it after a few rides and just make sure it's not working its way loose. I'm just going to move the exhaust around a little bit. I've had this exhaust off before. It is a whole one-piece unit. It's very tight. There were problems on my Sportster. By the way, although this video is for Dyna, it's going to be very similar for the other bikes. On the Sportster, there were some spots where there were clamps attached to the side of the engine. One had cracked and was making a chirping noise. The Vance & Hines uses this big black bracket. So I'm going to check all these nuts and make sure they're tight. Another thing I want to check is where the exhaust connects to the engine. The studs, when I first got this bike, I noticed the nuts on the studs were loose. So I don't know why those studs were loose, but I tightened them up and they came loose right away again. So it's a little dirty, but what you can see I did is I put an acorn nut on. So I have the regular nut on the stud, and then the acorn nut comes after it. And those two nuts are tightened to each other, and they've never come loose. But I'm just going to check those right now. So there's four of these little bolts that hold this bracket. Just going to check each of those. Just about everything on the bike has a torque spec. And some of these fasteners are attached with Loctite. So if something has Loctite and you turn it, you just worked the Loctite loose and it's no longer doing its job. So that's why we're just lightly checking 
the fasteners. I don't want to move them, but if they are loose and they do require Loctite, then that's something I'm going to have to take all the way out, clean the threads, and redo. Next, I'm going to move on to the rear shocks. These have a big three-quarter inch bolt at the top. And if memory serves, these are held in with Loctite. So this is an example of something I don't want to disturb. And that's using a T50 at the bottom, Torx. Other than that, you know, just give them a little shake. Make sure nothing feels loose. Also on this side, we have the rear brake mechanism. And since this is going to start up front and run down along to the brake cylinder, which is back by the back wheel. You gotta check that all underneath the bike and just make sure nothing is hitting anything. So, depressing the rear brake should feel nice and solid. Um, there's a long bar that runs along the length of the exhaust behind it there. And we just wanna check that, that's a painted bar on this bike. See if there's any places where it's rubbing anything. Maybe the paint has gotten chipped or anything like that. Anything indicating a problem. It really does come close to the frame, but don't see any issues there. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the rear wheel. And there is a lot to check on the wheels. And there's some tools that are helpful to have. One is... A tread depth tool so you can measure your tread depth. Another is a spoke tool. Uh, this one fits a couple different size spokes. As we get around to the belt, there's the belt tension tool. I'll show you that later. Then obviously the tire gauge to check your tire pressure. And then there is for the Dyna an alignment tool which Harley tells you how to make yourself. <laughs> so I'll show you how this thing is used as well. To start with, we want to check the tire visually. This tire, believe it or not, only has about four or 5,000 miles on it. Uh, it's a Michelin Commander 3, and it has quite a bit of space in the center of the tire where there really isn't much in the way of tread. And at first glance, it looks like, wow, this thing's almost bald. But there's still plenty of tread on this. There's one of the wear bars. You can see down in there pretty good. And this is supposed to be a pretty high mileage tire. So, you know, I'll keep an eye on this, but I should easily be able to get 15,000 miles out of this. I've never ridden it in the rain, and honestly, I'd be really concerned about this in the rain. So I don't know if I'm going to get another one of these. I guess we'll just see how it behaves over the life of the tire. But what I'm doing right now is just visually looking for anything wrong. I've had issues with tires on cars where there's a nail or a screw or something like that in the tire that I was riding around on and didn't even know. Another thing we want to check is the wear of the tire. Is the tread wearing unevenly on one side versus the other. And so that's where your tread depth gauge would come in handy. You can compare the two sides. Because the tire can be out of alignment uh, this way, it's important to check that as well. So I'll show you how you do that. So this alignment tool, it's just a coat hanger, a bolt with a hole through the bolt to hold the coat hanger. And then this is just made so that it can fit in the center of the axle. Now, unfortunately, I have axle nut covers on, and I'm not going to take them off just to do this. There's a hole here in the swing arm. You insert the hanger, and you line up this so it's right in the center of the axle. And then you just tighten it on the alignment tool. Then you go to the other side, and you make sure when you put it in the center of the axle, it also goes into the same exact spot in the hole in the swing arm. And that's how you make sure the axle is in alignment. So the tire appears to be wearing nice and evenly. I don't see any signs of damage or abrasion. I'm going to take a flashlight now and take a look at where the wheel bearings are. 
And what I'm looking for is any grease. And everything looks pretty dry in there, which is exactly what you want. Grease around the wheel bearings would be definitely a sign of a problem and something that would need closer attention. A little hard to see over on this side, but I think if there was any grease leaking out, it would be on the sprocket and probably have a little mess going on there. I'm back on this side since this bike has ABS and I'm right here. I'm going to check the ABS wire, which is coming right down here, going across and into that little boot. And that appears to be seated just fine, not hitting anything, not being damaged. Now we did turn the wheel before, but I'm going to do it again and just listen. It's good to know what it should sound like when it's healthy, so that if something's amiss, you can recognize it. I can hear the sound of the brake shoes touching the rotor, but I don't hear anything with regard to wheel bearings, any grinding or anything metallic, and that's a good thing. We mentioned this tool for spokes, and the other obvious benefit is you can go and hit all your spokes and make sure they're giving you the same sound. They're not all going to be perfectly in sync, but if there's one that's like a thud, you'll know it. So those are all sounding pretty musical. Like I said, if you're getting a thud, and you're not getting a ring, that's definitely something you want to look at. Something else we can check if you have spokes is wheel run out. So as we rotate the wheel, does the sidewall kind of waving in and out as it goes through. So I'm just going to put the screwdriver right up to the edge of the wheel and just start turning the wheel and see what kind of motion there is or movement from the tip of the screwdriver to the sidewall. Next up we're going to check the drive belt. Now I have things positioned so that you can see the belt over here. And what I'm going to do is start turning the wheel and I'm just going to be looking for any cracks, any pieces missing, anything like that. And you're going to want to go over the whole belt from start to finish. So you can find a spot uh, on the other side of the belt, maybe a marking or something, and use that as a reference and just go all the way around. This belt has almost 35,000 miles on it and these belts can hit 70, 80, uh, I think even 100,000. Okay, so we inspected the teeth on the belt and everything looks good. But we also want to inspect um, the outside of the belt. But again, we're just looking for anything that looks amiss, out of place. Yeah, there's part number right there. Cracks. Obviously, if your belt comes off while you're riding, you're done riding. All right, she looks good. Now, I mentioned the axle nut covers that I have earlier. Um, when I put these on, I positioned them so the lettering was a certain way. So I can tell just by looking at those that the axle nuts and bolt have not moved. But if you don't have those, you want to just take your uh, socket, throw it on there, and just make sure it's tight. The rear axle is critical. If it's too loose, obviously it may come loose, and if it's too tight, you can damage your wheel bearings. So you always would want to be using a torque wrench and torque it to spec. Something else I like to check while I'm in the neighborhood is the bolts on the rear sprocket. You know, these obviously are critical. Sure, nobody's loose. There should be five of those. All right, very good. Something else in the rear wheel area that I absolutely check on my bike is to look inside and check the wiring. There's some wiring that comes out from the under the seat area. 
and enters the fender. And you can see it right there. I have seen where wiring under the inside fender gets damaged, and then you lose a turn signal or a brake light. All right, so I've pulled off the seat and just wanted to do an inspection of the wiring cavity in here. This is my custom dynamics, it's called triple play. Pretty much nothing else to see here. You know, the seat just covers that up nicely. Now I'm gonna pull off the side cover. All right, side cover off. And here there is, so that's where the, I think that's where the triple play connects in. Just looking for anything amiss. Um, don't want any critters living in here. I think I see something under there like a little nut or something like a like an acorn nut. Not an acorn, but oh, it's a kernel of corn. Gee, I wonder if that came that way from the factory. Yeah, we don't want that in here. Everything looks good, clipped together like it should. Let's take a look at the kickstand. I just serviced the kickstand. Probably one of the last things I did before the riding season ended. That's going to be your mechanism when you lean it over. And of course, this part. Now I know the spring is super tight. I'm going to insert a little video of what it looks like when your spring is not tight. And doesn't keep your kickstand all the way up where it's supposed to. You definitely want to correct that if it's an issue. If your kickstand is making any noises, squeaking, squealing, anything like that, it definitely needs to be cleaned and re-lubricated. All right, now we're going to take a look at the bolts on the primary cover. Again, I'm just going to throw my Torx in there. Actually, it's not a Torx. It's a 3 hex down. All right, nothing's leaking out of the primary. I'm also going to look on the back of it and make sure everything looks nice and dry. There's no buildup of grime from the road, which would be maybe sticking to oil that's leaking. Up here we have the shift mechanism, and we want to check that as well. Um, behind here, we've got some levers and things, and those can become loose. I just replaced my factory shifter rod with this Heim joint style. There's a hex down in there as well. You can check, but everything looks good here on the shift mechanism. Some other things that we can check while we're here. The Dyna has the horn on the front, which is kind of weird. And this bracket is known to break. I've gone through one already. But I'm just checking that, making sure the wiring is good, plugged in properly. I'm going to look under my oil filter to see if there's any sign of leaking, and there isn't. You also have your spark plug wires. Just press down on those. I have nice short wires. Obviously, if you smell a leak of fuel, that's a problem. This is the fuel line pushed up in there. No fuel around that. And way up under here, I mean, this is where the where the ignition uh, switch is because you put the horn up yonder. Yeah, so this is the main on-off switch. Um, I just as soon have the horn here, but. Way up under the tank is the stabilizer for the alignment of the engine to the frame and the transmission. Um, I had that checked not too long ago, but that's another area you want to take a look at and maybe throw a socket on there and make sure everything is tight. A few other things while we're on this side of the bike, um, the foot pegs. Obviously you want them to stay up. Just check, make sure they're nice and tight, no squeaking or squealing. These foot pegs rotate. You want to check that, make sure they're staying in position. And you can see there's a lot of bolts here for 
the, con the forward controls. I have the forward controls reduce reach kit. So I'm going to throw um, my Torx on and just check those and make sure they're tight. These are T45s. That's the guy on the road who had the OEM style shift rod come loose. This is what that looks like. So these are notorious for breaking. Um, there's nothing you can really tighten here. And his just popped out. So we used some zip ties and duct tape to get him where he could shift till he got to his destination. All right, let's take a look at the handlebar area for a minute. So I'm just gonna rotate the bars back and forth, left and right, quietly and listen. You hear some sounds of the rubber from the various wiring and such. But what I'm listening for is anything in the head bearing. The grittiness, any binding up, anything like that. This is an important one. And the other thing is, especially, you know, they talk about Harley wobble, Dyna wobble. This head bearing needs to be just right. Not too loose, not too tight. So that's more of a maintenance item, but on the safety inspection, you just want to check that these handlebars aren't binding up and aren't too loose. Another thing to check, which I will clip in a video, is there are bushings for the handlebars and the factory ones are rubber and they can get loose. I replaced mine with a set of poly. Didn't really notice an increase in vibration, but they're nice and tight now. We have this part on our front forks called the triple tree. It's going to secure the down tube on the frame to each of the forks. So you got three connections. And we're just going to check that those are snug. The fork tubes stick up just a bit at the top. And you want to make sure this distance is the same on both sides, otherwise your forks aren't gonna be aligned or even. So just as we went over the rear tire, we're gonna do the same on the front. Let me find my valve stem. There it is. All right, so I'm just checking for, you know, anything, nails, any weird stuff that we don't want on the tire. Any damage abrasions. I mean, it's obviously a little dirty right now, but again, there we have the wear bars. This tire is even newer than the rear. Um, we can do the same thing to check the run out with the screwdriver and the jack stand. And then we can check the spokes as well. Start at the valve stem. All right. Very musical. As we did on the rear, I'm just gonna rotate the wheel and listen. No signs of any grease or anything by the wheel bearings. No feeling of roughness or metal on metal. Swing around the other side here and take a look at the wiring for the ABS harness. There's a lot of other things to check here. Take a crescent wrench, half inch. Check the fender nuts. Quarter inch uh, hex. We've got the other side of the fender bolts. Whole bunch of stuff to check with the 10 millimeter. Our brake calipers, where they're mounted to the frame. This bike has dual discs, so we've got both sides. Then we have the Torx 40 for the discs. I had a noise on my front end 
when I first got this bike, it took me a little while to figure it out. Some people thought it might have been brake rotors. Some people thought a loose bolt on the fuel tank. Um, it turned out to be the forks themselves were low on fluid. I'm going to insert a video showing that uh, issue I had with the forks and what the front fork should sound like and shouldn't sound like. So now what I'm going to do is go all around the bike and check the uh, thickness of the brake pads, front and rear. I also want to check the brake lines. Here we have the front brake caliper, and that does not look good. I can see there is some uh, moisture, brake fluid, and the paint is peeled away here. So that has leaked out and caused some damage, which is not nice. So we'll have to see why that is. Check the brake line coming down. This bike has ABS plus the dual, so it's going to go to both sides. I'm going to look for any evidence of leaking. And you want to do this on the front and rear. So that issue with my front brake fluid, um, you know, if that just went unchecked and uncared for, I'm not sure how long that would be an issue, um, other than making it look kind of ugly. There's a little cover here that pops off and exposes the ABS valve. Everything looks nice and dry in there. Something that I really dislike is the handlebar controls. I had to replace both the upper and lower brackets this year. Um, these housings are made of aluminum. They feel like they're made of cheese. Both this bike and the sports that I had had uh, the threads pretty much stripped out on a couple of the holes on each of the brackets. I had to replace them. I think Harley sells a lot of these. It's just um, when you put them back together, there's a specific order that you tighten the top versus the bottom, a specific sequence that is, and then of course you have to torque them just right or they'll strip. These use a T27, which is not apparently a common size in a lot of kits. And so sometimes people use a T25 and then they damage the head on the screws. And a lot of the things we're checking are things that just might not be commonly noticed just in day-to-day -day or week-to-week riding. You know, make sure your mirrors are tight. Then there's all the uh, operational controls themselves. Turn signals. Um, I have the custom dynamics module, so that has some uh, nifty things we'll get to in a second. Make sure the hazard lights work. Um, brake. You know, you can have a problem where the brake will light from maybe the front grip, but not the back, which would be a problem with the switch. On one of those, I had the rear switch go bad this year. Um, high beams. Where are you? They're on the other side. Beep. Horn. So on the custom dynamics, there is flashing and then it holds. So you want to check your throttle cable snapback in both directions, fully extended, right and left, make sure there's no binding up there. Then you want to come over to your clutch, the clutch check an adjustment, you know, is something done part of regular maintenance. You want about the width of a nickel here. Um, you also want to be lubricating your cables on a regular basis. Oh, speaking of clutch cable, it comes down under the bike in a braided cable. 
and you can see I, when I was lifting the bike, I had to make sure that it didn't get caught on the jack because that has happened sometimes. And um, you want to just inspect this underneath. And really everything under the bike, we'll do that at the end. We want to check that. It's also a good thing to follow the routing of the cables and just make sure, you know, nothing has any scrapes or abrasions or damage to it. Here's the crossover cable between the, each side of the fuel tank. Just a visual inspection, basically. Um, the clutch cable gets routed down here along the down tube. Um, just want to make sure that looks good. Oh, when I bought my Sportster and was doing some work on it, I was adjusting the throttle cables, and when I pulled these rubber covers back, guess what I found? A kernel of corn. No, it was all rusted in here. So you want to make sure that these are in the right position. Maybe silicone lubricant or something just to kind of seal that. You know, like a grease, silicone grease. All right, um, this bike has an engine guard. So we just want to check, make sure that's tight. Wouldn't want that coming loose while we're riding. So we spent a lot of time over on the left side, but coming back here to the right, check the brake caliper tightness, bolts for the rear sprocket. Need another size. So we also want to check the foot pegs on this side. Make sure they're nice and tight. They stay where they're supposed to. We had checked the brake uh, previously. How well, that works. Now let's take off the battery cover. Let's see what's going on in there. Regular screwdriver. If a bunch of corn comes flying out of this, we're going to have a problem. I was out riding once and the bike was making some funky things happen. It would cut off and then cut on. And then it started getting worse and worse. It was a loose battery cable. Those are nice and tight. Everything looks like it should. So just as we did a nice visual inspection over on the left side of the bike, um, we want to do the same here. You can certainly check all these bolts and the transmission for tightness. Cam cover. Um, we're looking for oil leaks. Just anything that looks out of the ordinary. The rocker box cover was a notorious leak problem on the 1200 on my Sportster, but I've never had a problem with it on the twin cam. I mean, visually, you should be checking the bike pretty regularly. Whenever I have a ride to work day, I usually come out in the morning on break or at lunchtime. The bike's usually out in the sunshine. And I just take two or three minutes and walk all around and give everything a good visual. And um, it's obviously not as detailed as checking fastener tightness, but the point of that is you want to get familiar with what normal looks like so that when you see abnormal, it jumps right out at you. I'm having a real hard time uh, getting focused on that battery cable stud, but the other end of the negative battery cable is way down there. It's under the battery behind the ABS sensor if you have that the ABS module. Um, but that's also a problem area where if that comes loose, uh, you're not going to have a good connection. We're almost done, guys. I am on the ground. Uh, this is the back tire. So I'm at the back of the bike on the left side. And I'm honing in on where the rear motor mount is. Here you can see two hex bolts. I'll show you what it looks like on the front and that will help you appreciate it. So the two hex bolts you saw, this is the corresponding ones on the front. And then these bolts, which go laterally, uh, are also something that can be checked. And I had these replaced last summer. So I know they're good, I've checked them, but technically the motor mount is a wear item. 
So it should be part of your routine maintenance to check them from time to time. And it was definitely the least fun job I've ever done on this bike. So proceed with care. I've looked at everything I wanted to check with the bike up on the jack. Now I'm going to lower it and just do a few last things. After getting the bike down off the lift, I remembered something I wanted to check, and that is just physically putting your hands on the turn signals. These can be moved. They're not super tight uh, on most bikes. And the other thing you can do is you can get someone to hold your bike up and check the alignment of the headlight and make sure that it's pointing forward, it's not cocked to one side, and giving you the light that you need. So a few last things I wanted to mention. Uh, the air cleaner is something that also should be checked for tightness. I usually pop this off every few thousand miles and do the K&N air cleaner process where you re-oil it. And while in there, I check the other fasteners inside, but I'm just gonna give that a tug and make sure that it's tight. One of the last things I wanna show you is how to check the belt deflection. So this is the tool, where are you? You're going to put the O-ring here all the way down to bottom, which is zero. When I turn this, uh, this is not focusing, there is a number 10. We're going to apply pressure. This goes on the belt. We're going to push up until that O-ring goes all the way up to the number 10. As we're doing that, we're going to be looking in the belt deflection window here, which has little graduations on it. Each graduation is a sixteenth of an inch. They want the deflection to be between a quarter inch and five sixteenths. So I'm on the belt. I'm going to push this up to 10. I'm at 10. I'm going to take note of where I am in that belt deflection area. Yeah, that was a little too crazy trying to do everything while holding the camera. So now that the bike is off the list, the last thing I want to do is just take a good look under here for any leaks anything like that I mean, I've done this recently so I'm not expecting anything all right guys we went over a whole bunch of stuff on this bike and there's probably some nuts and bolts here and there that I glossed over or can go back and check but you get the idea you're basically going over you know kind of a circle around your bike checking everything up down top bottom making sure that everything is tight you're checking for leaks, abrasions, scrapes, anything rubbing where it shouldn't be. Uh, my bike did pretty well. I have an issue with the leak at the front master cylinder, which I'll admit I'm annoyed about because it peeled that paint off. So I'll see what that's all about. Um, you could finish this up by checking your tire pressure. On my bike, I have a windshield, so I'll just make sure uh, those fasteners are tight. Uh, touring bike's gonna have the fairing so there's going to be a lot more going on there saddlebags same thing but you should get the idea i do over 100 rides a year on my motorcycle i'm on it a lot and being on it every few days just kind of take for granted like yeah everything's working fine if there's a problem i'm sure i would notice it but like every other page in the harley service manual there's a bold warning serious injury or death could result from this and not to be too overly dramatic but let's face it Every time we go out for a ride, we're taking our life in our own hands. There's things we can't control like other riders, but there's things we can control, and that is the condition of our bike. So by going over all the details as much as we can, uh, at least annually, we're ensuring that our bike is safe, nothing's going to come flying off of it, and we're doing the very best we can to enjoy riding it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was educational. Thanks for watching. Till next time.